Welcome back to Inside City Hall. With the fall semester now well underway, the city university system is seeing an ever-increasing number of students arriving in the CUNY classrooms. Recently released figures show that CUNY had record-breaking enrollment this year, with more than 274,000 students spread out over two dozen institutions. Joining me now to talk about that and more, we've got presidents of three of the highest-ranked schools in the CUNY system. Each of their schools, in fact, were recently chosen by Washington Monthly Magazine as delivering the, quote, best bang for the buck among all colleges in America. Karen Gould is the president of Brooklyn College. From Baruch College, we have President Mitchell Wallerstein. And from Queens College, we have President Felix Matos Rodriguez. Welcome to all of you and congratulations on that ranking. Thank you. In fact, Thank let's you. let's start let's start with that. Um, when they say that you you provide the best bang for the buck. Well, we know that CUNY tuition at the senior colleges is about six thousand dollars a year, which is pretty good. A good deal. Um, uh, what's the what's the bang though? What are what are students getting? What do you think of as the product that you're delivering? Well, I think the bang is that we are giving an outstanding ed education at a very affordable price, and we are making sure that our students are well served and that they graduate and they graduate with very little debt. Mm. And, and and is is that a, a consideration for you, President Wallace? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. The I think that's one of the great attractions of the CUNY system, is mm -hmm. that we can deliver, as President Gould said, a very high quality education. I think the other factor, though, is jobs. And a significant portion of our students graduate with jobs in hand. Many of them, of course, work while they're going to school as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I associate that with the, the, the culture of Baruch, that because there's a sort of a focus on business, that that's what a lot of people are coming seeking. But I wonder, what whatever happened to the ideal of, of liberal arts education as you know, sort of knowledge for its own sake, oh, being an but, educated citizen? But, but that continues to be part. I mean, there's no contradiction between those two things. I mean, at, at Queens, for example, we've educated the largest number of uh, teachers. I mean, if you go, if you're in a public school in New York City, you're probably going to have a teacher, a principal, a counselor that comes from Queens College. And at the same time, we graduate the largest number of computer science majors uh, in the tri-state area. We graduate more computer science majors than NYU and Columbia combined. Really? So, yep. So, I mean, you have there folks that are going into tech, folks that are going into science, people can be going into business. Uh, and so there's no contradiction between having a well-rounded liberal arts education and, uh, and then moving into something that's going to lead to, to a job or a career. Do, do you regard um, your, your school as part of this big emphasis on STEM we keep hearing so much about? That was one of the big surprises. This is my fourth week as president at, oh, okay. at, at, at Queens, <laughs> right? And, and about 40% of our students are STEM majors, yes. uh -huh. uh, which so, something that you probably would not think about if you think about Queens as a traditional liberal arts uh, college. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a big, I mean, people know that that's where the future is going. And, and that's uh, true of Brooklyn as well. Our largest school is our School of Natural and Behavioral Sciences. So uh, this is definitely uh, uh -huh. a pathway. So now, d talk a little bit about uh, the s sort of um, the the path from community colleges. They've gotten a lot of attention. CUNY has started an entirely new community college from Washington. We hear the president talking about community colleges as an important um, sort of way to get things going, and I think the mayor has really sort of emphasized that as well. Are are you seeing the the, the, the sort of the ladder or the pathway from the community colleges to your your campuses? Absolutely. I, I think the community college uh, numbers are growing on all of our campuses. I think Brooklyn mm -hmm. College ha uh, receives the second largest number of community college students in, in the entire CUNY system. Mm -hmm. We have over 1,400 new freshmen this semester, but we have over 2,000 transfers. And our, our situation is identical. Uh -huh. About two-thirds of our incoming class are from the community colleges mostly from the CUNY community colleges, but also from other community colleges and some four-year schools. And th these are schools that, by definition, have um, mastered this, this very serious problem of attrition and dropouts that the community colleges struggle with, right? Yes. Well, I mean, these are the successful mm -hmm. students, are mm -hmm. the ones who well, are Well, I mean, I, I use that line. I mean, I just actually transferred from a community college. I was the <laughs> president at Hostos and came to this, and right, I used right. that on my welcome day with our students, uh -huh. which traditionally you would have thought that, that the class is going to graduate in four years. And I said, well, some of you were graduating in four, some of you are graduating in three, because you have first-time freshmen and a large number of transfers. And one of the things also that's been very, very important, we have in other three campuses are dual degree majors, mm -hmm. in which the students right. already begin at a community college, but they're already a Baruch, uh, you know, a Brooklyn or a Queens uh, College mm -hmm. student, and they they move immediately uh, from finishing the two-year program into into our colleges, and that's very, very important. As, as you um, know, there's this raging debate about um, the, the city's um, schools and the high school graduates who are arriving at your campuses in need of remediation. In other words, the, um, the, they didn't get some important stuff that they were supposed to get. Um, 
what's the connection? I mean, how do you, how do you, what's your role in making sure that that gets fixed? Well, the senior colleges don't do remediation in general. That's what our two-year campuses are for. Mm. However, we do have some special programs where we admit students who may have a deficiency that we know we can address and work on, such as the SEEK program mm -hmm. um, and uh, some other you know, very hands-on programs where they are having intrusive advising. So we've had very good success, I think you have as well. Yes. Uh, with programs where they may not be quite up to the par, mm. but in general they're going to the community colleges first. We have sought uh, private funds uh, to augment the funds that the state and the city make available, although in the case of the senior colleges it's, it's state funds, mm -hmm. and that those funds are used for things like a communications institute, it's actually called the Bernard Schwartz Communications Institute, we have a writing center, a counseling center, so we're trying to augment, but as President Gould said, we don't do remedial education on our campus. The, the other side of that too is, I mean, it's not just being ready academically. I mean, one of the things that we work with having a large number of first generation college students, you know, for example, at Queens, about half of the class are the children of immigrants, mm -hmm. right? It's also college navigation. So, it's one thing to be ready in terms of your math and your writing. Uh, the other thing is to be ready about understanding FAFSA forms, uh, just navigating college. And that's equally important to be successful. And that's one of the things, right. and you know, President Wallenstein mentioned the 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 support programs which are very very important uh, to make sure that students who are uh, you know academically ready are also college ready and take advantage and graduate in time and we have a transfer center to do precisely that but I think that's one of the things I wanted to add to the students working and getting jobs because most of our students are first generation or the children of first generation. They're already working. 50% of the Brooklyn College students already have jobs mm -hmm. when they are in college. So of course they're thinking about what's my next job going to be when I graduate, whether they're a business major or an English major or a fine arts major. Mm -hmm. And so uh, talk a little bit about some of the, the new initiatives you have. I mean, the, the, the cat's out the bag, you know. I guess it's nationally known now. This is a place to come get a great education and you can do it uh, without breaking the bank. Um, but I know that 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 hasn't stopped you all from sort of trying to move forward with with uh, different initiatives. You're, you're I guess, j j just arrived. Uh, just sure arrived. Yes, yeah, I mean, uh, some of the things, for example, that we're doing in computer science is, mm -hmm. science is also tying up to this need to have uh, folks that that know coding. You mm -hmm. know, which is a large growth in in the tech sector that we want. So we're trying to marriage those skills and work with um, uh, with a couple of providers to be able to do that. So mm -hmm. in that case, some of the students might be able to get a very nice coding job. Uh, while they're getting their degree that helps to to pay that and we sort of help the New York City tech industry which is which is increasing so that's one area where mm -hmm. we're hoping to um, you know to expand what we do and uh, and also we're doing at the master's level which is equally important a lot of sort of uh, science professional programs mm -hmm. uh, we have one in photonics and some other areas because there's, there's a demand for those kinds of jobs it is not getting a PhD but there's good jobs out there and we have the qualified uh, scientists in our in our schools to be able to train them. Uh -huh. Of course, our largest uh, no, no, our, our largest uh, school is, as you suggested, our business school. We we actually the largest collegiate business school in the United States. Twelve thousand students wow. in, the, in the business school, oh, and they're, that's including both undergraduate and graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're offering degrees up to the PhD. Mm -hmm. um, our, some of our new initiatives are at the master's level as they are on the Queens campus and I'm sure Brooklyn as well uh, and we've added a new uh, degree in arts administration uh, we're developing a new degree in international affairs that will be offered through our school of public affairs mm -hmm. so uh, there are a variety of of programs. Arts administration how to, how to run these many cultural institutions Correct. around exactly. the city and around the world. We think you know this is the city to do that. Absolutely. Sure. Right. So I, I have to uh, brag about our new, about to be launched, uh, Graduate School of Cinema at Steiner Studios, which is a unique oh venture. Uh, there is no other Graduate School of Cinema in the country that is going to be located on a working lot. So wow. we are tremendously excited and we will have uh, probably about 100 graduate students starting next fall, but uh, in three years we will have uh, 320 graduate students in production, post-production, where the jobs are, mm -hmm. uh, including screenwriting and um, uh, acting for television and movies. So oh boy. It should be a lot of fun. Okay, <laughs> you all are gonna be uh, besieged. You should warn your admissions offices <laughs> that right, uh, a be. flood is going to be coming in. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming by. Best of luck with the semester and with the year. We're gonna take a short break now and coming up.